Hey, I'm Alana and welcome to Button Bash. The Sims 4 recently came out on PC and ever since I've been going through the very same cycle I do every time I play a Sims game. I play it and I can't stop playing it and I can't stop thinking about it and all I want to do is sim. Trying to get myself to stop playing it is a series of, oh, just after I get this promotion, wait, no, just after I get this person to move in, wait, maybe after I buy that new fridge and suddenly, oh God, it's 4 a.m. again, what have you done to me? But the whole time I'm playing it and being addicted to The Sims 4, I'm very aware of its flaws. They're just somehow kind of easy to ignore. So for those who haven't played a game in The Sims franchise before, uh, wow, where do we even start with you? What else haven't you played? Tetris? The Sims is the highest selling game franchise of all time. Get it together, man. It's basically a human life simulator that's really hard to explain without making it sound really dumb, but you're probably used to me sounding dumb by now, so let's just do it anyway. You basically get to control your sims, who are like people you've created with personality traits, names and appearances as they do various activities, work through their careers to earn more money and have relationships with other sims. I think the addictive part of the sims for me is in that career progression. Working your way through a career usually involves getting certain skill points, which you can get by dedicating a certain amount of time to a certain object, like practicing your speech in the mirror to boost your charisma. So you might need to save money to get certain objects to get certain skill points, but at the same time you need to manage your sim's mood. If they're hungry, you feed them. If they're sleepy, you put them to bed. If they're in need of social interaction, you make a new friend. I really just like getting rich and building amazing houses though. All of this stuff is very familiar to how it was in previous games. And one thing that has been notably updated in the new Sims is the new emotions. And it's super hard to say that phrase without it automatically sounding like PR jargon because the folk at EA kept talking about it so damn much, but it is cool in action. Your Sims have several states of emotion in The Sims 4, not just red or green. For example, there's embarrassed, which could come after your Sim has been rejected after trying to confess attraction to someone, and that state of embarrassment will actually influence what they're willing to and able to do. If you're embarrassed, you have new dialogue options like trying to redeem yourself. Your Sim might have a new want pop up, which will tell you that they want to go to bed and hide under the covers, and doing so will get them out of that state of embarrassment a whole lot faster. But these emotions are constantly changing and evolving depending on what happens, and thus they give you something to consider aside from just basic needs like eat, sleep, fun, toilet, shower. Discovering a new emotion is a cool thing too. For example, after my sim had his first kiss, there was an option to go bake some heart-shaped cookies because he was feeling flirty, and you can bet I baked the pants off those cookies, Oh yeah. All of that stuff definitely does add to the game though, in surprises, new challenges and completely diverse experiences. The specific traits you choose for your sim will ultimately affect how you end up needing to play the game because those traits alter emotions, wants and needs. And while the build mode has also been updated to make it easier and smoother since you can now drop rooms in fully furnished and you can customize things more than you ever could before, these two changes are the only ones that really stand out. I guess it's also graphically better looking but not so much that you'd notice it without having played The Sims 3 recently. Beyond that, it kind of feels pointless. The Sims 3 has mountains of DLC that add extra content to the game, but even without those, there's just more to do in that game. It's like The Sims 4 is, at large, a really simplified version of The Sims 3, and while the groundwork is solid, I just don't think this game is worth upgrading to until there's a whole bunch of DLC out so that it can match its predecessors. And that's a super crappy thing to say about a game, I can't imagine any other franchise getting away with that, but somehow The Sims does. Things missing from The Sims 4 that were in previous games include pools, toddlers, career branches like law enforcement and business, the open world feature, there's now a loading screen between lots, there's no story progression in that Sims won't get married or get jobs or have kids without your direct interaction, burglars have also been taken out, as well as newspapers, private schools, dishwashers, hot tubs, pool tables and a whole lot more, it's crazy. So overall The Sims 4 is the same Sims fun from the previous games, just weirdly refined. There are some major improvements, but it mostly just feels like things are missing and as a result I just encourage you to get The Sims 3 with some expansions instead of paying full retail price for The Sims 4 at this point. I'm Alana and thanks for watching Button Bash.